Hi everybody. I hope you're all enjoying your uh, Memorial Weekend. It's Sunday at, I don't know, about 9 a.m. and I decided to take my dog Tux for a stroll through the north end of Manchester. This is what I consider the real north end. The north end carries on up to the Hooksett border, but that area is nothing like this. This area has a lot of uh, historic, beautiful buildings. A lot of them are still original. A lot of them have been unfortunately covered in vinyl siding, so they lost the character and the look of them. But that's a beautiful house. And so is this one. Unfortunately, this one got sided with aluminum probably in the 60s or the 50s, but it was, it's still a beautiful building. That's a nice one too, but I get the sun glaring in my phone. This area is still fairly kept up. The inner city is slowly leaching its way in this direction, but it hasn't quite destroyed it yet. I get it, give it another 10 or 15 years and this area is going to start looking run down like the rest of the city, unfortunately. Anyone that's lived in Manchester or has been around since at least the 60s or 70s has seen the, has seen the city just fall apart. So what's happening is all the people from Massachusetts are moving up here and they're just destroying it. They're bringing up drugs and crime. There's also slumlords that are just buying up property. They, do, they, don't, they don't take care of anything. Because all they care about is money and profit. Which is happening in just about every city, unfortunately. Come here, Tuck. I'm trying to get out of the sun's glare so we can see this house. There's some beautiful craftsmanship in some of these buildings. They simply don't build houses like this anymore. Houses nowadays are all cookie cutters. They're all exactly the same. Whereas these late 1800s and early 1900s houses, they're almost, ind each individual house is, they're all unique. It is a beautiful day though. It's absolutely perfect weather. So I figured I'd get out here and make a quick walk, make a quick video with my dog before it gets too hot. I'm a little out of it today. I had a few beers last night, but my brain's still working at about 70% capacity. And we'll take a walk around this old school. A lot of these old schoolhouses were, they, they were abandoned for quite some time and fortunately they, a lot of them got restored. And now they're used mainly for office buildings. I think some have been converted into apartments. But even the schools back then were beautiful. I'm not sure what the name of this place is, or what school it was. There might be a name in the front of it, but right now it's called the Silver Tech Company, whatever that is.
Nice stuff, that's for sure. It says no trespassing or anything, but I don't care. I'm cutting across. Right? What are they going to do? Arrest us for walking across a parking lot? I was hoping there'd be a name or a date etched onto here, but I don't see anything. For all the locals that live around here, I know you probably don't care too much about staring at old houses, but all the out-of-staters that you know don't live in in the New New England area, you're gonna get to see some cool stuff right now. That one's a cool house, also. That was a huge trend back in the day when the houses had that. It was like a bump out with a steeple on top of it. It's very unique. And this is the Ash Street Inn, which is a it's a bed and breakfast. Which I honestly was unaware of. I had a few beers last night, so my, my brain's not functioning as, as well as it normally does. But I'll do my best. Nice house with a nice wraparound porch. I believe if we head down here and I believe if we take a right, there's a gorgeous house up here. That's obviously apartment buildings now. I'm not sure what the original purpose of the building was. At least I think it's apartments. I can't see what else that would be used for. This house that I'm about to film is located on Myrtle and Ash Street. This is a very unique house. It's a Victorian era house. It basically looks like a giant doll house. And it's been very well kept up, obviously. Even as a painter, I don't know if I'd even want to do this. This is so much work. There's a good chance that there's a spiral staircase that leads up to that, that steeple area. I'm sure the inside looks just as nice as the outside. It just goes to show you that if you keep up with an old house and paint it every 10 years or so, this is what you end up with, a beautiful house. <coughs> hey puppy. <laughs> it's okay puppy. The mean boxer. Oh, there's three of them. Uh-oh, we're gonna get attacked, Tuck Serrani. The house definitely leads some uh, 
Need some trimming, that's for sure. The trees are kind of overgrown in the front. But the homeowners may like it that way. Beautiful house. Absolutely stunning. And there's a beautiful park across the street also. You'll often see people having weddings here. Or at least having pictures here done after the wedding. And we'll venture off down this way. That's a different angle of that apartment building that I was filming earlier. It's just a little things like that. That dormer that's rounded that just pops. All the roofs, they're all angled and shaped like a... How can I explain it? It's like a bell. It's nice stuff. Building a house like that these days, would, would, it would be a small fortune. That's why they don't build houses like that anymore. Especially the other one that we just looked at. That thing would cost millions of dollars to build in this economy. And there's probably not even craftsmen that can even do it. You'd have to hire artists nowadays. Carpenters today, they know how to cut two by fours and cut 90 degree angles. They don't, they're not craftsmen. They're not, they're not using uh, scroll saws and making ornate, ornate pieces of wood. It's all simple, straight, straight cuts and 90 degree angles. Even a caveman can do it. And 95% of houses built today, are, they're all the same. They all have the same trim, they all have the same molds, same cabinets, same everything. Boring. That's the best way to explain it. I've worked in like modern two to three million dollar houses that don't even interest me. Like that was once a beautiful building. Unfortunately, it got vinyl, so who knows what's underneath it. What happened, what happened is in 1978 when they banned lead paint, throughout the 80s and, the, and early 90s, they were very strict about working on lead, lead paint houses. So everybody was vinyling them. But I wager and I hope that in the near future that people are going to start ripping off the vinyl and restoring some of these houses. And the problem with vinyl is you can't see what's going on underneath it. You can't see any rot damage. You can't see what the insects are doing. So you could have a, a whole side of your house that's rotted and you don't even know it. This building is very unique. This is one of the coolest buildings in the city. It's currently being restored. It's the Chandler House. I'm not sure if it's volunteers that are doing it, but I, I may actually give these people a call and see if I could volunteer, you know, a day or two here and there to put, do some work here. So I'm not sure if they're actually hiring contractors or not. I'm not sure how they're going about it. But I'll take a, a little walk around it. It's an absolutely beautiful building. Well, there is a construction company here, so it's probably not volunteers. Come here, Tuck. Let's go check this house out. It's rough, but it's actually in pretty good shape considering how 
considering the amount of neglect it's been getting. I just hope they're going to do it right, which I assume they are. There's just so many hacks out there. Even big construction companies do shitty work. But I'm assuming this is getting done right or not. Obviously they're working on that deck. They ripped off all the original old railings and put a structure in place to support it. So who knows if it's, if it's gonna get restored right. But odds are they took the railings off and they're located at a different location and they're getting restored, hopefully. Either that or they're getting milled. Copied and milled, rather. I cannot think today. The, those, the nine beers I drank last night really screwed my brain up. I don't drink often, so definitely puts a toll on me. But that porch is absolutely beautiful. The sun's glaring, so you can't really see anything, but that's a beautiful, beautiful building. And we'll walk back around this way. Another cool house across the street. I like how that, that peak's got that structure on it. Neat stuff. Come on, Tux. You're wrapping around my legs, buddy. funny because I was in Concord this morning I had to look at a, a, seven, a 1789 house that somebody needs some work done too but Concord's so much nicer than Manchester it's just kept up Manchester's just going downhill like you walk around in Concord like all the old buildings are kept up the yards are mowed and you walk around here and it's a, just a complete disaster it's turning into Massachusetts unfortunately You gonna make it, buddy? My dog's starting to get hot, so I'm probably not gonna walk around much longer. Another cool old building. I could probably walk around for a couple hours in this general area because there's quite a bit to see and it's a nice area to walk around in. But it's a little warm out. Tux is hot. Right, buddy? A little longer. We'll go back to the van and go home. Okay, bud? I feel bad because I have a a 14 year old golden retriever that can no longer go on these walks. He's just too old. He's starting to drag his back feet, so he's wearing his claws down on the pavement. So he's semi retired. He'll still go on some missions every once in a while, but not today.
I love all these houses. They have like a peak on them. It's just neat. Instead of modern houses that are just a bunch of square boxes. Like this one's all original. You can just tell by the paint. And it's funny because I'll work on modern houses that are 20 years old and they're falling apart. The siding's rotted. Then you get a house like this that's well over 100 years old and all the wood's original. The old growth lumber was definitely better than the crap they're using today. And over here we're slowly leaching into the, the shit part of the city. Well, I shouldn't call it the shit part because Manchester is really not that bad, but you know what I mean. This is one of those roads that I never really drove up or down. I believe this is Orange Street. Yeah, it's starting to look familiar now, because I recall the little store here. That's a neat little house. Well, it's an apartment building. It probably was a house at one point, and they just put a bunch of additions on it. Like I've said in my previous videos, back in the day there used to be a corner store in like just about every city block. Just a little family run store. Such as this one. This one's closed. They're all run by Pakistanis now. Which there's nothing wrong with, but they just they don't have the community that they used to have. and the classic Manchester brick buildings. This was St. George's school. So this was once a Catholic school. I believe they're all closed throughout the city. The only Catholic school that's still going, I believe is Trinity High School. They all died in the early 90s. I went to Catholic school. I went to uh, St. Mary's on the west side up until the fourth grade. It's a neat old church. That looks very old. Definitely 1800s. I'm not religious, but the morals of the uh, the religions are great. It's like it's a good place to bring your kids or raise your kids. 1898. Let me restate that. Back in the day, there was just more. There was more morals in the city. A lot of the kids went to Catholic schools, and they were brought up right. There was less crime. There was less less filth. And ever since the Catholic schools closed, it seemed like everything just went downhill. But I blame mostly Massachusetts for slowly moving up here, and like I said, bringing drugs and crimes with them. They have no respect for anything. That's an oldie. Definitely a slumlord that owns it, who's not taking care of it as usual. So what we have now is a city with a bunch of zombies walking around, fucking high on heroin and meth. I'm glad I don't have children, because I would not want them being raised in today's society. I wouldn't even trust my kids to ride their bike down the street nowadays, in the city, anyway.
Even though this area looks nice, there's a lot of fucking, a lot of drugs around here. I know because I was working up here on Harrison Street and you just see all the zombies walking by. You see at least 20 to 30 a day. Which I don't get. I don't understand why you'd want to do a drug that just turns you into a zombie. It doesn't look too pleasurable to me. Come on, Tatak. Come on, buddy. That's a beauty, and it's for sale. <laughs> it's a commercial building, so you can't technically live in it. We're going to take a right down here to see another cool building. It's a funeral home, a funeral home now, but it was once a just a regular house for a very rich man or a rich family. I actually spoke with the the manager of this place, I don't know, about three or four years ago and, and gave him a price to paint this place. Although it doesn't need it. I think he was just getting quotes for a, a future paint job. So he said the last guy, it took him, it took him, I believe he said six months to paint this place at $18 an hour. And I just laughed. I'm like, I could have done it myself in like a month or two. But this is a beautiful building. It looks like it's from Europe, like Germany or something. It is now a funeral home, but it was once an actual house. The Goodwin Funeral Home. And that there is the Granite State Credit, Credit Union Building, which I painted the exterior, I believe, three summers ago. The front of it's all white stucco. I'm not going to walk there because I could care less about it. But I also painted a lot of the interior of that building. And this gentleman see me working out there and he stopped by and talked to me to see if I'd be interested in doing this in the future. And to be honest with you, I don't think I want to do it. It's just, it's too much work. Because I work, I work with myself. I don't like help. Because 90% 90, 90 of the help I've hired over the years, they're all crackheads. They chase you for money every day, they show up late, and most of the time they'll work for a week and you never see them again. So, you know what, I'd rather work by, by myself and not deal with it. This building actually looks like it's non-functioning. Non-functioning. I wonder if it closed down. Because all the grass is overgrown, which is very unlikely for a building like this. Strange. Well, anyway, that's the Goodwin Funeral Home. This was the Straw School which I'd never really noticed before. That's why I like walking and not driving around because you see all these buildings. I'd imagine this was probably a private school and these were probably the dorms that the kids stayed in, is my guess. Interesting.
This is a good example of a typical Manchester apartment building. This one is wood, and this one has been vinyled, which looks like absolute crap. And right here, there's a beautiful wooden church. You don't see many wooden churches. They're mostly brick around here. But it's covered in cedar shakes, which would, would be an absolute nightmare to paint. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't. I don't care what they pay me. I would not paint this building. This is the type of job where you just hire a bunch of monkeys to do it for you. But there's some really serious craftsmanship on this building. All the corners are rounded on the staple, which isn't an easy thing to do. Nice stuff. Right, Tux? I was hoping I could walk around it, but it's gated. Well, I guess I can. Who cares? Come on, Tux. And this side is completely rounded. Again, not an easy thing to accomplish. That's why most buildings are square. I love urban exp exploring, it's, it's fun, it really is. That's a high peak too, wow, that's really up there, that's a good 60 feet or so. Well, I guess I'd paint it for the right money, it wouldn't be cheap, that's for sure. Because you have to brush in all these cedar shakes, it's a lot of work. And we'll venture off down Union Street. We're almost done, Tux. Another 15 minutes, we'll be home. All right, buddy? It's starting to get warm, huh, big guy? Tux is a great dog. He's great to walk with. I don't even know he's attached to me. He doesn't pull. He just walks along. Sometimes I forget he's even he's even with me. Another cool house. It's got some cool siding on it. Some architectural siding. The color's ugly, but it's still nicer than vinyl. I hate when people paint brick, but whatever, it's not my building. Oh, and there's the lovely house on Harrison Street that I've been working on. I'm pretty much done with this place because the, they're just cheap and they don't want to pay. I've coated on a few things here and they refuse, so I don't know if I'll be back. I might paint the inside, but that's about all I'm going to do here. I help Tim out every once in a while, if he needs a hand. But for those of you who have not seen my videos of me working on this place, it's coming along fairly well. But this was once a beautiful Victorian building that's been converted into apartments. It was probably converted, I don't know, in the 60s or 70s. 
It's been condemned for about, I'd say the last 10 years or so. If you would have came here last summer, you couldn't even see the house from the road. It was overgrown with vines and bushes. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but a lot of people haven't seen this house. But at one time, this little bump out here had a spiral staircase built into it, and there was a steeple on top of it with a sitting area. It's obviously long gone because they they split it into into two levels and made it into an apartment and turned it into a turned it into an abortion. That's the best way to explain it. He just ripped the vinyl siding off so you can kind of see what it used to look like. The corners all had um, square brick molds on them that matched these dormers. I mean bay windows. All the dormers up high had squirrel work on them. It's kind of sad. The people that bought this place, they're, uh, they're Pakistani. And they're cheap. They're just they're doing everything wrong. They should have just gutted this entire house out and just redone the whole thing. But what's neat, Tim found this little door here. That's been hidden for, well, I'd say at least 40 years. And Tim just completed building this deck, I don't know, about a week ago. He did a great job. The deck's going to outlast his house. Come on, Tuck. So you can see all the, the ornate scroll work that was that used to be up here. Unfortunately, this is all going to get wrapped in metal. It's going to look like shit. And they're going to put new vinyl siding on it. I tried talking talking him into taking the vinyl off and just restoring the clapboards, but too much money, too much money. But what this guy doesn't understand, if you would actually would have done this house right, you'd probably end up getting a hundred thousand dollars more for it. But he's a foreigner and he just doesn't understand. On the inside, it was still original horsehair plaster. And he hired me to just put quarter inch drywall over everything. And it looks like absolute shit. But anyway, I've had enough of that house. If you want more information about it, you can look on some of my, uh, look on my channel. I got a few videos on it before the work was done. But anyway, I think that's going to conclude my uh, my little walk today. I'd walk longer, but my dog's kind of tired. So I hope you enjoyed. Sorry for my uh, hungover, bumbled words today. Later.